How many ways can three lines intersect in the plane? Hi, I'm Scott Baldridge, and this is Geometry and Topology Today. I'm here at LSU, the beautiful campus of LSU, with Moshe Cohen, a mathematician, who's going to talk to us today about lines and planes in space. So, Moshe, tell us about the answer to that question you posed at the beginning. Well, if we're thinking about lines in the plane cutting, we can cut a slice bread just by making parallel copies like this. And Something like this. It looks like a pizza. Exactly, where we just, all the lines go through that center point. Cool. We could also do something where two of the lines are parallel and one of them cuts through it. A triangle, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a question about this. Um, does it matter how, what the triangle looks like? We can imagine swiveling the lines around and nothing is really going to change until we get something like this line coming through that point here. So any triangle really is equivalent. So you're going to say that any, any three lines in space as long as they kind of form something that looks like a triangle, is going to be called equivalent or the same. Exactly. Okay. So this is so this is really easy. Uh, this is something that you could you know anybody could do in a little bit of time. Um, how do you how do you uh, make it more interesting? So we can start by making n go up. We have n is equal to three here. And if we take four, five, six, you could do this at home. It's not so bad, but. If we try to go up to n is equal to 10, it's going to take a pretty uh, exhaustive list to try to get everything. And you're going to have a, a really hard time making sure you didn't miss anything. That's something big in mathematics. So you're trying to classify all the different ways the configuration is. And you can imagine it's going to be lots of them. But it's still going to be fairly straightforward, right? So it turns out that we can solve these types of questions by looking at where the intersections happen. This is characterized by one triple point. This is characterized by Three double points. Three exactly. double points. The two points. Yes. Um, so then, where do you go from there? It, so that I believe is something that you know people could do given enough time. And we can go up in dimension. For example, instead of taking a line, which is a one-dimensional thing, in the plane, which is two dimensions, we can take planes, two-dimensional things, in three space. So three space would be like this room. Exactly, and the room but, itself is built out of planes. You have the wall is one plane, the floor is another plane. So we have four walls, we have the ceiling and the floor, that's six planes. So imagine something like this where we're enclosed by a cube. So that, that would be a way of getting a room is by putting in planes in space. And then that would be six planes. And then you could ask the same question if, if I put 10 planes in or 15 planes into, into space here and asked, what are all the different types of room configurations? Is that or different ways of, of, of those ways. How many rooms you would get and things like this. And, and how many uh, lines uh, intersect? So it's a little more the complicated planes, the because intersect? these two planes are going to intersect at an edge, at this line, sort of uh, where the wall hits the floor. But in the corner of the room, you have two walls and a ceiling giving you a point. So there's an interesting dimension question there that sometimes they might intersect at a dimension one thing and sometimes they might intersect at dimension zero. So that's all very interesting. Still, I think you, most people could, with enough time and energy, um, sit there and at least do like a few examples. Uh, where, does it, where does it really take you, where, you know, how would you generalize this situation to something that um, is what a mathematician does? So it turns out that, that that case is studied, not necessarily for, for planes in three space, but for uh, something called hyperplanes in hyperspace, some very, very high dimensional things. But that can also be solved in terms of these intersection types. So we're going to change it by instead of putting planes in three space, we're going to try to do planes in four space. Oh, wait. So explain to everybody what you mean by four space. So it's like, so I get that three-dimensional space is uh, this room. You've got this direction, that direction, and an up direction. It's three different directions you can go. So what's an example of 
for the, space. So the fourth dimension maybe could be time. And you could imagine that we're going to take some 3D picture of three space and then kind of sew them all together, sort of like a movie. Like a movie. So, so it would be like different pieces of, of someone moving, but all glued together in, in an extra dimension. And I could watch you, or the viewer is watching us, walking through three space, and our, our arms are moving in three space. But, each, uh, but at each time, it we're in be, it would just be a frozen, a frozen picture still. Of, exactly. Frozen picture of us in three space. Exactly. So, okay, so now tell us about, so that's what you say, is, is these planes and four space. What, now that we're up to this, what is it, the theorem that, you're, that you've been uh, working on, or the basic idea? The trouble is that this idea from the real case, from the easy case, that the intersection points tell us everything about these spaces is suddenly not true anymore. And there's this big counterexample that happens at 13 planes in four space. So now you have to imagine 13 different planes in four, in four dimensional space has some sort of configuration like this. And what's the counter example? Or what's the, what, ex, describe what? There's, uh, these pairs are named for Zariski, who was a, a guy who studied equations way back uh, almost 100 years ago. And we're studying equations of these things and trying to find equations that should look the same. Maybe they look the same by the intersection points, but it turns out that the way that they sit in space, the geometry, is different. And so, so 13 is the magical number. What, how does that relate to the theorem that you're... That We've the gone up. Uh, many, many people have cleared out and found that there are no counterexamples below 6, below 8, below 9. So we're finally working at 10. Uh, we've found some nice list to look through so that we don't have to check the millions and millions of cases that you would get. So that means that at 10, you, you, you know that everything is nice up to 10. And 13, it, it just goes right off the deep end. So we're hoping to figure out really 13 we know is the first place we have a problem, but maybe the problem starts somewhere earlier. Maybe at 11 or 12. Maybe even at 10 in one of these one or two exceptional cases that we still haven't checked. Oh, very good. So, one last thing. Uh, what, would a, what would a high school student need to study in high school, say, if, say they're a 10th grade geometry class? What types of things would they have to study to be able to do something like this someday? So I love the geometry. Here we have triangles, and we can sort of move the lines around and figure out how many rooms we get and things like that. But I'm doing a lot of algebra. It's really hard to keep track of lots and lots of these lines. So I need like the equation of these lines and to find out the point of intersection, which is something you do in an algebra class. But if you can't do that with one point and two lines, you're not going to be able to do it with 10 lines and 32 points or something like that. Anything else? Uh, this geometry gives you a good spatial intuition for how to generalize and for how to really say, oh, I think these cases are all going to be the same. For example, 10 parallel lines should look kind of like three parallel lines. Got it. Got it. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate you coming over today. It's great to be here, Scott. Thank you.